Hey there, comic book fans. Today I thought we'd take a little look at From Hell, the uh, comic by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell. It's a big, thick book. And let me tell you a little bit about uh, my history with this book in terms of uh, the... F I, um, I, f I bought the first... This was originally a, being a melodrama in 16 parts. This was originally put out in single issues back in the 90s. And I picked up the first couple of single issues um, before I decided I wanted to wait and read it all as a graphic novel, a collected edition. And as you see here, this one, first printed collected edition, November 1999. Hard to believe this came out 20 years ago and it's been sitting on my shelf for 20 years. But after I decided I wanted to read it all as a graphic novel, I, I can't even remember why. I was like, nah, I don't want to read it as an individual, because I generally like individual issues. Probably because they were square bound. I don't like that square bound format. But then I got this version of it in 1999 and read it and was very disappointed with it. I, f uh, I found it kind of very dense and hard to understand at times, and I got very, very frustrated with it. Uh, and then when I finished reading it at the end, I noticed all these, you know, I didn't know they were there at the beginning, all these author's notes. And I was like, oh, I was just so frustrated. I was like, there is no way I'm gonna read all those author notes now. And then I said to myself, sometime in the future, I'll reread it and ch check out the author notes then. Little did I know in 1999 that 20 years were going to pass before I would attempt to read this again. Because I always felt like I missed something from it. Because like I, I read it and I just didn't understand it. Um, I know a bit about Jack the Ripper. I'm no Ripperologist, but I've read a magazine or I've never read an, a book on Jack the Ripper. But I've read magazine articles about Jack the Ripper. I've seen countless you know, documentaries on Jack the Ripper. So I have some familiarity with the story, but in reading this the first time around, I was just like, ah, just drove me nuts. When I, half of the book, I had no idea what was going on. So this time I decided to read it with the author's notes. I get, I, let me flip back to the author's notes and show you that it says at the beginning, you no, know, it gives you, um, it gives you page numbers on the author's notes. So this is prologue, author's notes, chapter one, then it gives you chapter two, page one, page two, page three, page four. So something like in the beginning, there's lots of author notes on individual pages. That slows down a bit going through. But one thing I, one conclusion I came to reading this, and I did enjoy reading this, this time through, when I realized this is not the story of Jack the Ripper. This is the story of, of Alan Moore researching Jack the Ripper. Just for, one of the things, it's like, um, one of the things you have to, there's, uh, let's, let me flip back to the beginning and show you what I mean. Beginning starts in 1923 in our prologue with these two old guys who you have no idea who they are. You don't find out who these two guys really are until the end of the story. But it's the, um... But it's like, th this guy is some royal fortune teller. He's like, worked with the royal family. And this is the cop who investigated Jack the Ripper. And I was like, you just don't know that at the beginning. And you, unless you read the notes and he tells you a little bit what's going on. Then, then it opens with the... Uh, this stuff here is, is okay. But, but as you look, I, I refer to uh, Eddie Campbell's art in this as kind of uh, unspecific. It's very sketchy. And at times it's like... The characters aren't very distinct from one another. It's like who can, who can remember who these characters are from chapter to chapter is one of the problems with this. Uh, but if, as you read, it's like this is um, uh, the sex scene. There we'll flip past this. That that was the Prince of Wales, I think. It was one of the princes, and he was a royal family member having an affair with some woman. So that's important to the story. And but like I said, each. Some little page, it's like, what's this page here? It's just kind of, then, then you'd flip back, let's say page nine, chapter one, page nine, and I'd read it. And then I'd, I, I read it with two bookmarks. I had a bookmark in the back and a bookmark. 
The chapter is 8 and 9 tells you, what is it? The ritual shown here is accurate if abbreviated depiction of Masonic Initiation Kingdom. Uh, yeah, into the... So it's like there's two pages of Masonic ritual. It's like, how are you supposed to understand that? Well, you're not until you read the author's notes. So it's really important to read the author's notes with this. Then this is what... Re I remember reading... This is what really confused me. All of a sudden we've got a page with all black. Another page with all black. It comes into focus. And... It's a little, if you don't find out to the bottom end of the third page, it's a little kid with his dad. Now, what's the significance of this page? You have no idea when you're reading without the author's notes. This is a flashback to this, this little kid here is the main character who Alan Moore thinks is Jack the Ripper. Dr. Gull, I think was his name, who grows up to be a doctor who takes care of the royal family in a mason. Uh... But it's like, in reading this, it's like, you go through three pages, one, two, three, of going, what the heck's going on in this comic? Then you read the author's notes, and it's just because of, he found out in his research that this Dr. Gull worked on this boat with his father when he was a kid. So, he threw, so a lot of scenes are based on his research. They're not based on him coming up with a story and all the scenes serve the story. All the scenes come from his research. So it's like that there's some things that are just st strange. Uh, here, there's Dr. Gull. We're introducing him. And it's like, if you don't, you don't find out till halfway through this giant book that Dr. Gull is who Alan Moore thinks was Jack the Ripper. So, so it's kind of like, that's why it's so dense without these notes. Uh, because he just explains to you why each scene is there. And it's like, oh, that makes sense now. Is that this story was perfectly clear with the author's notes, but without the author's notes, not so clear. Once again, here, here's another Masonic ritual. And you're like, you know, why are there so? Why is there? Why is there a Masonic ritual page in here? Just because Alan Moore, you know, that's what he discovered in uh, researching all this that the Mason, he thinks the, the. Um, the doctor was a mason and other masons helped cover up that he was Jack the Ripper. Not that they were in on anything. But then he goes around this, and he tells all stories about the architecture in... The, this is the... Telling all stories about the architecture in London to a cabbie who he thinks was helping him. And story-wise, it's just kind of like it helps set the atmosphere. But unless... But it's kind of like, why is this in here? It's all just background material for understanding why Alan Moore thinks this guy was Jack the Ripper. So like I said, it's really, really, really about Alan Moore researching Jack the Ripper rather than there's the Queen of England, Queen Victoria, Queen of England, she's in there with the, she's the doctor. But there's just tons and tons, tons and tons of scenes that are in here for, because that's what he figured, that's what he found out. And I don't know, like I said, without the without the notes, I don't know how well it holds together. They're, they have um, they have a few pages in here of the what is it? The sort of in, the police autopsy inquiries. I think this is one of them. Well, like it's September 30. He's just, he's just going through. Oh, the they're interviewing witnesses. And here's a here's a scene where um, the police there's Buffalo Bill goes and talks to some wild Indians, as they call them. They, they were part of Buffalo Bill's traveling show that was left, they were kind of uh, left behind, but somebody thought, and doing his research, somebody thought that um, Buffalo Bill and his wild Indians may have had something to do with these killings. This is way back when. So he wanted to put a scene in there with them, but like this scene doesn't make much sense unless you read the author's notes. So that, 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 that's what's really odd about this as really good with the author's notes. Without the author's notes, it's tough to penetrate. Because like there's just I like that Eddie Campbell's um Eddie Campbell's indistinct artwork on the and I'm an Eddie Campbell fan, but when you get this has a large cast. And as you can see from that drawing there, it's very sketchy. And a lot of the artwork is very sketchy. So it's like keeping track of one person from another, like Here's a picture of this 
guy drinking. And I remember this, these particular pages, I lost track of who this guy was. So I had to read, and when I, when I read the um, author's notes and it reminded me who the guy was, I was like, oh, okay. But you know, how, how different is that guy than the uh, police guy? And there's, there's William Gull, who he thinks is, whoops, Jack the Ripper, right there in the middle. And, you know, how is he different? How is he that different from this guy next to him? <laughs> A lot of, you know, there's the, the artwork is very indistinct. So that made for some confusing stuff too. And, you know, here are, it's in black and white. Everybody's in long black coats. So I can see why I really had a hard time with this at the uh, the first time around 20 years ago. Oh my goodness, N need I point out that it's hard to believe 20 years can pass that quickly. But you know, there's just, just there's such a cast of characters, you know, there's just, um, I think this was, a, he threw in a party, he throws in famous characters of the age too, just because they may have come into contact with Jack the Ripper and his friends, like I think this was a, this was a party at an author's house that oh, I forget which famous author it was in London at the time. So it's like there's all sorts of scenes like that are, that are thrown in just because of his research. Because in his research, he figured that these guys may have known each other. They may have run in the same circles. So he put them in in different scenes. But if you don't know that, if you have no author's notes and you don't know that, you'll be confused as to why the scene is in there. So... It, that's, and you know, he does the, uh, that's Gull being Jack the Ripper and killing a woman. And he's just having him, having him do it according to the, uh, according to the reports of the time at what happened. Then he also has, once again, he has, see, see this Jack the Ripper with a modern building in front of him? He had this underlying theme going on that Jack the Ripper was somehow being lost in time as he did these things. So all this, sometime, and without the author's notes, you're like, why the heck is that modern skyscraper there? You just know, you don't know exactly why, but you know something weird's going on. And Jack the Ripper, he has some recurring magical theme with Jack the Ripper slipping through time, and it really affects the plot, not at all, but it's just a theme he wanted going on. So, it, it's, and there's there's some more indistinct and I have nothing against sketchy artwork but with a huge cast and trying to keep like let's see if we can these two guys up top here with the bowlers hats one in gray and one in black it's like which one is what they, they look nearly identical and that happens over and over again so without the author's notes I'd be more I, I was like I said I I got so frustrated with this 20 years ago, and by the end of it, I just was tired of it and didn't like it and did not enjoy the experience and didn't recommend from hell to anyone. But I must say, in reading it with the author's notes, I can recommend it now. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good, as long as you're not annoyed by, like I had a friend who was like, I could never read a comic that way, and I don't blame you. But if you want to flip back and check out the author's notes every few pages, I, I would just run into something that I was confused by and flip back. So, th there's some nice spotting of blacks and artwork going on there. But there you go, I just wanted to give you a little look at this. From Hell, it's, uh, man, 20, 25 years about since it first started and 20 years since it finished and it's all collected. Uh, and Eddie Campbell is coloring it now. And there'll be a color version of this coming out. I think there's individual issues out now. So um, check out the if, if if you can check out check out the check out this black and white version. Make sure you get the one ones with the author's notes. Uh, the new color version. Hopefully they'll have some author's notes too. And hope you enjoyed this look at From Hell.